Hi there, Richard here from SafeX News. So if you remember from a previous video, we went through the best practices on how to back up and secure your SafeX wallet. In that video, I did mention that I'll go through a few different novel ways of backing up your keys, um, which we didn't obviously cover in that video. So this is the first of many videos that I'm going to be doing, uh, just giving you different ways to, to back up those keys. So in this instance, what I'll do is I'll just bring up my virtual machine here and I'll show you the first um, method of um, backing up your keys in, in, in a secure way. So this is called Shamir's Secret Sharing Scheme. It's a bit of a tongue twister, so I'm probably going to mess it up a few times explaining it. But I'll just read it directly off the screen here. So it's in cryptography. A secret sharing scheme is a method of distributing a secret. So the secret in our case is the private key amongst a group of participants, each of, each of which is allocated a share of the secret. The secret can only be reconstructed when the shares are combined together. Individually, shares are of no use to uh, on their own. So what this is basically saying is, it's a method of taking your private key and then chopping it up into a certain amount of shares or a certain amount of segments. Each of those are then encrypted in, in a certain way. And then you distribute those shares out to different people, different locations, um, in a bank vault, wherever you want. And we can go into that later. When you're when you're chopping up that secret, and once uh, once you're distributing that secret out, you also set a something called a threshold, which means you you set a certain amount of those keys are required for it to be reconstructed. So each of those keys on their own are impossible to understand and they will get nothing out of it. But based on your uh, threshold, uh, it's possible to reconstruct it as long as the amount of, that you've set in your threshold is met with the amount that you've, you've entered. Now, it's a bit of a complicated way of explaining it, but I'll, there's a demo page here. And is your threshold. So your threshold is basically how many of the shares that you want, uh, that you require to reconstruct the sentence. And this is the amount of shares that are produced. So is a secret, let's just put public key there. And I'm going to make it five. So I'm going to create five shares. Let's split it. So there you go. There's five shares there. So what you can do is you can maybe print the first one out, uh, put the second one on a USB stick and, and give it to a family friend, a family or friend. Uh, print the third one out on um, a bit of card or whatever, put it into a bank vault, into a storage box or anything like that, off-site. Uh, so it's entirely up to you how you, how you, debate, how you distribute them. Um, it's your own security, so it's it's required. So remember how I set the threshold as three. So let's see what happens if we only put one of those keys in. Goodbye. And there we go. Fatal error. So it wasn't able to reconstruct it. So what happens if we put two in there? Game. Error. What happens if we put three? There we go. There's our public key. So that is a way of being able to take your private key, turn it into something which wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to reconstruct uh, as an individual piece, um, and you can distribute it into many locations. And if you ever need your private key again, you can just go to each of those locations, grab it, and uh, reconstruct it as long as you remember what your threshold is. Now this particular website. Um, it does give you the option to be able to do it through this page. So, but however, just remember this page is not secure, and they even and they even give you recommendations not to uh, use this for anything. With, uh, use this actual tool for anything that's um, quite sensitive. They even sort of say um, Bitcoin secret keys or anything like that. 
Um, so I'm going to show you another method of being able to use that functionality but without compromising the, the security of your, um, your key. Now, if you remember, I'm using Ubuntu here. And the reason being is there's a version of this software that you can use um, which is compiled for Debian-based operating systems only. So that's uh, the likes of Ubuntu. Uh, I believe Kali Linux is, um, is, is one as well. But no doubt if, if you're already familiar with Linux, um, you'll know if your, your main operating system is, is Debian-based or not. So if you want to use this tool, uh, there's a method of being able to do it. And obviously, you go into your terminal like normal, and you perform this command. It's sudo apt get install and it's s s s s that's four s's there we go it's installed so the next stage is we're going to run the script to be able to uh, encrypt our private key from our safex wallet now if you remember this is SafeX Wallet. Now I don't really care about this account because it's got nothing on there. I've literally just created it for the sake of uh, this demonstration. So I'm not fussed about who sees this private key. Uh, but in any other instance, if it's got money on or anything like that, do not show this key to anyone else. Um, because if they do, they've got access to your account. So, so I've got my private key there. So the command that you need to run is SSSS split and then you set your threshold so the T is the threshold so I'm going to set a threshold of 3 and then you set how many times you want the key to be split out so let's do it 5 like I did on the website so you do that I then get my private key I paste it into the terminal it won't display on the terminal and there you go. Let me just expand that. So it's five segments. So that's my private key split into five segments. So individually, these segments cannot reconstruct my private key unless I have my threshold of three. So let's just paste that into here. So let me just show you the example. Now, if you want to reverse it now, you do the combine command. So it's, again, it's quadruple S, combine. Now, you're going to have to remember what your threshold is. So in my instance, it's three. So any of these will work. There's the one. As well, um, let's uh, number two as well. Let's use two. So it doesn't matter which order they're in, as long as as, as long as you you reach in your threshold. So there we go. There's my private key, unencrypted again. And let's just be sure. Let's just match that. Oh, well done. Sorry. Let me just copy that again. So there's my key. Let's just match it with this key here. And there you go, so they perfectly match. So I've been able to encrypt and decrypt my private key using the Shamir secret sharing code uh, scheme. So this is quite useful if you've got multiple locations that you can securely hide your key uh, or store your key. Uh, for example, you could you could leave it with a family for a family member or a friend. Um, Ideally, people who don't know each other and wouldn't be able to coordinate a conversation between themselves to realise that they've each got a key uh, and work together to put those keys together. Uh, gr granted, the chances are that they're going to even understand what this is is, is slim, but um, reduce your risk anyway. So, for example, so if I had five, I'd have one in, in my office somewhere, maybe saved on my desktop. Uh, I'd have one printed out, hidden somewhere else in is somewhere else in the house, 
uh, I'd leave one with my parents, um, maybe one with my grandparents, and I'd leave uh, another one in a um, bank deposit uh, box, which I have. So there's five separate locations that I can put my key. Now, let's say, I don't want to sound morbid, but let's say my grandparents pass away and I lose access to one of those shares. Uh, it's no problem at all because I've set my threshold as three or two or whatever threshold I've set it as. And um, I've still got access to four other keys, so it, I can still re recover them and uh, reconstruct my key if ever required. So th there we go. So that's Shamir's secret sharing scheme. Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, I know a lot of um, a lot of people who run um, cold wallets use this method as well. Uh, I believe uh, the Safex team as well use this method as a, as a means of securing their their their, their cold wallets. Uh, this can be used in conjunction with different uh, encryption methods. Um, and you, as I said, you can split uh, the amount of shares that you generate by as, as many as you want. You could have 50 and you could have your threshold as, as, as 49 if you wanted to. It's, it's entirely up to you, obviously. It's a lot of numbers to be handling and distributing um, but you get the idea anyway this is a just an interesting way so the next video i'm going to i'm going to look at creating a raspberry pi now i haven't tested it properly yet um, but in theory the wallet should work um, unless there's something fundamentally different with uh, the way um, the raspberry pis work i think i think there might be a little slight issue but uh, if we manually compile it, I think it shouldn't be a problem, but there's an option anyway um, to have a Raspberry Pi as a, as a kind of a, a partially a partial uh, cold storage unit. So keep an eye out for that. That will come up next. Um, as always, if you've got any suggestions for future videos, if you've got any other, uh, if you've got any feedback about the Shamir secret sharing scheme, I managed to say that properly this time. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, of course, you can always reach out to me uh, through the SafeX News website. Uh, I'm always on this, the official SafeX Discord. It's rich.bait. So if you've got any questions or any suggestions or anything like that, just give me a shout. I'm on most, most of the time, all day, every day. So, uh, yeah. So in, uh, enjoy and let me know how you get on with this.